This video looks at something called the theory of parallels. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Euclid's fifth postulate, otherwise known as the parallel postulate. So just to remind ourselves, the parallel postulate, or Euclid's fifth postulate, says, roughly speaking, if a line crossing two other lines makes the interior angles on the same side of the transversal have a degree sum that is less than 180 degrees, then those two lines will meet on that same side of the transversal as long as you extend your lines far enough. Okay. So what are we going to be looking at? We are actually going to be looking at that in conjunction with something called Playfair's axiom. And in the future, we're going to be looking at Playfair's axiom a lot. Right now, we're going to tie Playfair's axiom into one of our construction propositions, which is Proposition 31 in Book 1 of Euclid. And it's not exactly the same, but it's really, really close. Okay. So what Playfair's axiom says is it says for each point P in your geometry and each line L, there exists at most one line that passes through P parallel to L. The construction actually gives you what that line is. Okay. Now, we're also going to look at something called neutral geometry. And just like with Playfair's axiom that we'll see it more later on in the semester, same deal with neutral geometry. We'll see this more later on in the semester. So neutral geometry, by its definition, goes as follows. You're still going to look at all of your definitions, all of your um, common notions. You're also going to look at your propositions, propositions 1 through 28 only. So you're going to cut off bef after uh, proposition 28 in Euclid's first book. And you're going to take the first four postulates, but that fifth postulate, we're going to replace it with Playfair's axiom. Okay, so you're basically taking everything in Euclid's first book up to Proposition 28 with one replacement, pair, uh, Euclid's fifth postulate replaced with this Playfair's axiom. Okay, so that's the only difference right now. Now, using only this thing of neutral geometry, and quick check, what is something to notice about neutral geometry? Big thing to notice is we're not up to where you can, with any straight line and a point off the line, you can draw a line parallel to your given line through the given point. Okay, We don't have that yet. Well, actually, we do have that because that's part of Playfair's axiom, which we're going to sub in. Okay, But the big thing, and this is the really, really difficult one to wrap your head around, we don't yet have the proposition that says the sum of all the interior angles of a triangle sums up to 180 degrees. Okay, so we don't have that yet. That makes neutral geometry very interesting when you work it in the future. We're not really going to use that at all right now. All right, so using only neutral geometry, we are going to try to prove the parallel postulate. So what this means is our conclusion is where we want to get to our parallel postulate or Euclid's fifth postulate. And we're only allowed to use the first four postulates that we currently have, any common notions that we currently have, and the propositions 1 through 28 plus Playfair's axiom. Okay. Now, remember what the parallel postulate says. It says you got two lines like this. You've got a transversal like this. And if the sum of your two angles that are between the potentially parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal, if this sums up to be more than 180, if this sums up to be more than 180 degrees, the lines won't meet on that side. If it sums up to be less than 180 degrees, you will eventually have the two lines that cross. Okay. Now we phrase it in that direction where the sum of the degrees of your two angles sum to less than 180, so we're eventually going to show that this crosses. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with our three lines, or two lines that might be parallel, and I don't believe that's how I actually wrote them. Our two lines that might be parallel, and then our transversal, and we're going to assume that two of the angles, their sum of their degrees is less than 180 degrees, so what we want to show or what we want to end up with is we want to show that these two lines right here are going to actually intersect. They're actually going to cross. Okay, So that's the goal of where we're going to. So picture. 
Notice this is pretty much the same picture. Notice also that I've got some really terrible notation going on here. We should have had three letter names for our two angles. I abbreviated them with A and B, which is totally not what you should be doing in any way, shape, or form. I did this just for clarity's sake so it's easier for me to say the name of the angles. Okay. Now, notice what I've also done. So L and M are the two potentially parallel lines. And Line N here is our transversal, and point P is the intersection of one of the two parallel lines. I just picked the intersection of M and N. Okay. So specifically where that angle B is situated. Okay. So first we start off with the givens, and you can totally put those givens inside the T-chart. I didn't in this case just to make it so the picture didn't go on top of the T-chart. Okay. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually apply our proposition 23 from book one and what this says is we're going to go ahead and construct a line that we'll call L prime through this point P where P is the intersection of N and M where the angle here at C is going to be congruent to a new angle at C. Okay. Notice here what we just did. This is simply our proposition for copying a line segment and we did this in such a way that we got alternate interior angles. Now, we've done something with alternate interior angles before. Using this proposition 27, it says, hey, if you've got two lines, transversal and alternate interior angles are congruent, automatically these two lines have to be parallel. So L and, on purpose, the strategically named L prime are going to be parallel to each other. Quick note, the prime here does not indicate derivatives. If you're taking a derivative in this class, you've probably already done something wrong. Okay. Now, so here's what we've got. We've got two, this line L prime right here is we know the one line that is parallel to L. So now we need to see what's going on with this other line M. So I'm going to claim the following. I'm going to claim that if we actually add the degrees of the new angle C, the old original angle B, it's got to sum up to less than 180 degrees. Now don't overthink this. What do we already know about the angle C? The angle C was congruent to the angle A. So what we just did in step three here is I replaced the measure, the degree of angle A, with the degree of angle C. And since they're congruent, those two degrees better be exactly the same. So just to use a little bit of algebra there. Okay. Now notice, this sum is less than 180 degrees. Note where it is in the picture. If we're summing up angles and they're less than 180 degrees, did we get all the way back to the other side of the line? In other words, did we get all the way back over here? And the answer is no, since we didn't get to the full 180 degrees. Now, what does that mean? That means that since we stopped short, angle M and angle L cannot possibly be the same line. Okay? And this is totally just using... Um, this idea of supplementary angles, in other words, building up to the 180 degrees to get your full line. Now, if L prime and M are two different lines, what does that tell you about M as related to L? Can they possibly be parallel? And the answer to that is, well, no, because Playfair's axiom says you have at most one parallel line or one line that's parallel to your given line through a point, well, both L prime and M contain the point P or intersect at the point P, which means the only line that's going to be parallel to L through the point P is L prime, and we just said that M is not that same line, which means M can't be parallel to L. Again, according to Playfair's axiom. Okay, So just using that axiom. Now, once we've established that M is not parallel to L, Think about the definition of parallel lines. So pause the video here for just a second. Think about what it means for two lines to be parallel, and don't say railroad tracks. Okay, so hopefully you've thought about what it means for two lines to be parallel. It means what? It means that they will never intersect. So what does it mean for two lines not to be parallel? It means that they have to intersect at some point. So this tells you that M must eventually cross your line L. And that's it. Okay. So now we get that we've gotten that the line M and the line L are going to have to intersect here. And what this actually means at the end of the day, 
putting all of this into context, this means when you look at your parallel postulate or your Euclid's fifth postulate, it is logically equivalent to using Playfair's axiom. And in the future, when we get into modern geometry, we're going to, instead of using Euclid's clunky notation and terminology inside of his fifth postulate, we're going to instead replace it with the more cleaned up and easy to understand version of Playfair's axiom.